Good morning, welcome to our service this morning and a special welcome to members of the Southampton uh, Deanery who've joined us for this morning's worship. You're very welcome, hope you're comfortable uh, with us here in Knight Senham. Uh, this morning's service is going to be slightly different. Uh, once a month we normally meet as messy vintage uh, of an afternoon and uh, uh, this month uh, we've gone online uh, with our messy vintage service. This service is aimed at uh, the older generation and hopefully uh, you will enjoy it today whatever age you are. So do stay, do enjoy. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to look in at what might happen at Messy Vintage and maybe when we can meet again in person it might be something that you'd like to come along to as well. So enjoy. God bless you. Over to Colin. Good morning, or perhaps a good afternoon, or evening, or even perhaps good tomorrow. Uh, my name is Colin, and I'd like to welcome you to our Messy Vintage service. Normally, we would make a craft, celebrate, and then eat an amazing afternoon tea, all together in the same place. This is a bit tricky uh, with lockdown, um, but we've done our best to recreate uh, the Messy Vintage service in video form and we hope that you enjoy it. Today, we will be making lockdown crosses, reflecting on our lives in lockdown and where we can find hope in amongst it all. A couple of weeks ago, a group of us, including some friends from Bible Reading Fellowship and, and the Southampton Diocese, met on Zoom to make crosses and chat. The quality could best be described as authentic, uh, but we hope you uh, enjoy it and that you can join in with us. Pat kicks us off explaining how to make the crosses. We're going to make a lockdown cross. So we've got our cross and from magazines and brochures, we've got pictures of things that we're missing, things that we've taken for granted really while we've been in lockdown things that we're grateful for and things that we thank God for. So we're just going to put all these pictures that we found on to our cross. You can use both sides. Okay, so we're just going to glue them on. I've got people running because of exercise. I've got a man with music because music has become very important in lockdown, hasn't it? And I've got a little boy painting because of homeschooling. Houses because of my neighbours. Although I've got on with my neighbours, they've become very important to me. I've got a nurse because of the NHS and I've got a church because although our buildings are closed the church is still there we were supporting still strong we've learned different ways of coming together different services but the church is still there so that's our lockdown cross Okay. Thank you. Yes. So I'm I'm using little sticky back things. If you've got one of the packs, yes. and you'll find you've got in there. Sticky back things. So. I'm using glue. <laughs> Good old glue stick. Yeah, yeah, I've got glue sticks. Sticky backs are quite difficult. It's to get them off, isn't it? I finished mine as well. Yes. You've done the outside. I finished mine. Oh yeah. Now, the reasoning yeah. behind mm -hmm. mine is the little dog has been a lifesaver for us. It's meant we've had to carry on as normal. We've had to go out every day to look after him, which has been so important in this time where 
life has been out of the ordinary. Then the, my next picture I've chosen is, although this is hands doing a puzzle, I can't, we've done a puzzle, but we've spent time together, doing things together as a family, with my husband, spending time doing things, um, whether it's playing games or in front of the television, but it's just being together and spending quality time together. We've spent lots of time in the garden, doing gardening. We have a very neat, well, it did get very neat and tidy, but it's been a bit disorganized now. But we're, we've done lots of gardening. I think we've probably got the best looked after home environments of any, <laughs> of any, of any generation. <laughs> yes, indeed. Just because there's nothing else to do. I'm putting a bird on mine because the bird is the thing I've noticed the most. Actually. I have loved the bird. Yes. I, I yes. go out running and um, at uh, sort of six o'clock in the morning, the crows are stalking around on the front of people's gardens. <laughs> like, we own the place now. It's our gaff now. It's, uh, it's very interesting. I've people got a think switch. Like, people, people think I live in an aviary when I'm at work. But all they can hear is the birds cheeping in the background. I, I found a picture of a swift because the swifts have been um, diving over the fields and catching all the insects. So when I go walking with the dog, either first thing in the morning or in the evening, they're all swooping and diving over the fields. It's absolutely wonderful. The bird sound does sound louder, doesn't it? Yeah. Right. yeah. This is in your garden, you can hear it more, don't you? And the birds seem to be more confident as well. Or maybe yes. it's just that we've had more time yeah. to watch them. No, they've been smooth. They've been coming. I, I, I did the, um, the patio a couple of weeks ago, and I dug, dug up all of the uh, all the old all the old patio and put sand down. And this blackbird landed next to me, patted the ground a bit, looked at me. Went back onto the fence again, then came back and stole a worm. It's just, it's, it's, uh, it's, it is amazing, I think. I've had, a ro I've had a robin join me on my garden wall. <laughs> <laughs> I watched um, a pair of blue tits look after their young in a nesting box so each morning I'd go outside when the weather was really lovely half past six ish and uh, there'd be one of them would be watching the box while the other one came in with the food well, I, I just don't remember ever sitting and watching that before it's having time isn't it to sit and do these things yes, yeah not rushing not yes. hurrying yes. I've put, I've put football on mine because my son <laughs> has really missed his football and that's impacted on us as well. <laughs> I'm missing Wimbledon yeah. this year. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know. I love Wimbledon. Else Listening to your dog, I think our dog has loved lockdown. <laughs> We've had all the time, had lots yeah. of walks, and in fact, today was yeah. I've been out and about quite a bit today. You know, things are beginning to open up, and uh, and she's looked very disturbing. Me, kind of, where are you off? To? <laughs> well, I was going to say our little one has missed company and interacting with other dogs. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Just telling people off walking past the garden. <laughs> I like this idea of the cross. Kind of putting the things that we've missed and the things that have impacted us. Yeah. It's the cross, the cross over, is overarching, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. 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 I put a, um, a grandma with her grandmother, with her, her, her uh, grandchild on, on, on my cross. Because that's the thing, that's one of the things we've missed, is, is, is our granddaughter. Yeah, I've got the same. Yeah. 
missing family. That's yeah. huge, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And, and not being able yeah. to hug. Yeah. I wish I could have signed a picture of hugging. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I've just been able to go into a bubble with my daughter and her new husband. And just to be normal with them has just been so precious. Yes. You forget what it's like. Just getting into a car with someone else outside yeah. your own household. Yeah, yeah I, haven't, I haven't done that yet. Oh. Yes. yes, I had my first haircut and the hairdresser was all, all had her PPE on. Um, <laughs> However, she went to rub her face and it all went flying off. So it's rather entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not used to it. <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> Have you all got your face coverings? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. 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 Yeah. Oh, yes. Very smart. I've got a nice one. I've got a penguin. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't make it. I wish I could say I did, but um... no, I, I haven't made mine. It's a plain white one that I found in the shop. So <laughs> it doesn't matter. I, I it doesn't matter. Exactly. exactly. I turned up all proud with mine at the hospital, and they they pointed a heat gun at me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. you can't wear that, sir. Have this one. Yeah. So I uh, I put it on, and then they said, "Sorry, sir, you're wearing it the wrong way around." <laughs> to do the cross um, in one of our meetings so I had already done a cross and I'd already put pictures on and then when Colin said we're going to make a lockdown cross it's surprising how my pictures changed you know oh, that I, is interesting. I mean these are important of family and loved ones and the environment but then I thought no it's national health and music and that's so the two crosses, although the same, the pictures are different, yeah. surprising. The things that have become important to us. Yes, yeah. but now, now yeah. it's become important and grateful for all. Thank you, Pat. Right, thank you very much, everybody. Yeah. I shall press stop now. <laughs> We will begin our celebration with an opening prayer. As we enter prayer now, we pause to be still, to breathe slowly, to recenter our scattered senses upon the presence of God. Our first song is in Christ alone. And we are grateful to Graham Kendrick for permission um, to show his video on this service. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my life, my strength, my song, this cornerstone. This solid ground, firm to the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of grief. Fears are still when striving ceases. My comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ, I
light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day. The reading comes from John chapter 20 and begins at verse 1, just after the account of the crucifixion and death of Jesus. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. And they asked the woman, woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. And he asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. This morning we've been making crosses with pictures on them to reflect on our lives, and in particular to reflect on the impact that lockdown has had upon us. In El Salvador, in Central America, they've turned the, the making of crosses to reflect on their lives into an art form. This morning, we're going to think about the life of the lady called Maria Gomez by exploring the cross that was painted in her memory. In El Salvador, between 1979 and 1992, there was a, a brutal civil war. 
El Salvador was a beautiful country, but during those times, it was a horrible place. What I find, I think, the most difficult about all of this is that this was going on whilst I was growing up and whilst I was at university. And in fact, uh, Maria Gomez was killed uh, the year that I graduated and the year before we got married. During this time, uh, 75,000 people were killed, often disappeared and, and tortured. And uh, it was just an awful time. Um, you may have heard of Archbishop Oscar Romero, who challenged the government and their, and their behaviours and uh, was assassinated for his, for, 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 for his um, willingness to speak out. Um, the government used brutal terror tactics and, and were very cruel. Uh, I, I, and in amongst the crushing poverty and fear, death squads uh, roamed the streets, abducting people and torturing them. There was a great deal of violence against women and children were forced to, to fight and, and pick a side. And in the midst of all this horror, and unheard of in the official histories that I've read, was a lady called Maria Gomez, who could be described as a pinprick of light in the darkness of that time. She was a member of the Baptist Church and she was a teacher by profession. And in 1986, she founded the National Coordination of Salvadorian Women, an organisation that looked to support the victims of domestic violence and rape. And she worked across the country to address the suffering and subjugation in particular of women. She taught peasant women to read so that they could improve their lives. And in 1989, she was abducted as she walked home from school by an armed gang and tortured and murdered and then her body left by the side of the road. And this beautiful cross that you can see here was created uh, by, by her friends and by the church to remember her life. You can see on the cross all of the aspects of her life. You can see her teaching you can see her teaching in a classroom, teaching children. You can also see her teaching uh, the, the mothers out in the fields there, um, just wherever they could find a place. Uh, and then you can see uh, the, the, the sort of life that the people um, that she worked amongst uh, had working in the land and, and looking after their children and living very simple lives. And it's a really beautiful thing, it's a really beautiful memorial, I think, to, a, uh, to a, a, an amazing lady. An amazing lady who I should have heard about, but had, had never heard of. But it's a strange choice across. Why, why use a cross to remember um, the, the life of someone? Uh, who brought so much good into the world. Because the cross has lost its impact by centuries of, uh, of art and by, by the, uh, the making of gold crosses and, and making it into a thing of beauty. But to the Romans who used it at the time of Jesus, it was an instrument of unspeakable cruelty and horror reserved really for the lowest of the low, the enemies of the state, the scum, the, the ones who you wanted to shame. Crux, their word for cross, was a word that wasn't, wasn't spoken by polite people. It was the worst sort of swear word. Which makes it all the stranger that the Christians were constantly going on about it. So to the Romans it was an awful thing, you would never make a piece of art out of a cross. And to the Jews, um, to be hung on a pole was to be cursed by God. Uh, and, and also the, 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 the cross, the crux, was a symbol of Roman oppression. So it was a symbol of Roman oppression and also of God's curse. 
So why celebrate a life like Maria Gomez's with something so ugly? And the answer is because of Jesus. Jesus suffered and died at the hands of the Romans like many thousands of Jews of his time. He was just another Jewish troublemaker hanging on a cross to the Romans. But with Jesus, the evidence suggests that hanging on the cross wasn't the end of the story. What followed was as incredible as it was a source of joy and hope. God brought life out of death, joy out of suffering, victory out of defeat. And instead of seeing just the horrors of the worst excesses of humanity, we also see the echo of a truth that God forges salvation out of the worst of times. So when we see the cross, we remember resurrection, not death.
From that garden of tombs, Eden rises again. And paradise blooms from his body and never will end. He'll finish all he began. Creation hopes in a crucified man. Let us pray. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid or in isolation. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you taught us to love our neighbour and to care for those in need, as if we are caring for you. In this time of anxiety, give us strength to comfort the fearful, to tend the sick, and to reassure the isolated of our love and your love, for your name's sake. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. And deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our final song today is Thine Be the Glory. And we are grateful to St Andrew the Great in Cambridge for the permission um, to show their fabulous video.
a closing prayer. Father, help us to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help us to give ourselves away to others, being kind to everyone we meet. Spirit, help us to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all we do and say. Amen. If you're watching this on Sunday morning, uh, we're meeting up on Zoom at 11.30. If you would like to join us, please private message the Knights Emman Parish for, on Facebook and we will get the details to you. You can use the Zoom app to join us or you can dial in using a phone. Thank you for being with us today. During this difficult time when our church buildings are closed, we are still a church. Meeting virtually for prayer services and fellowship, loving our neighbours by offering practical support to the vulnerable and caring for our communities. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity. If you are able to give more at this time, here's how you can help. Thank you for joining us today just want to say a big thank you to Colin and Jane and the rest of the Messy Vintage team uh, that worked so hard in putting this week's service together. And uh, uh, also a big thank you to the Southampton Deanery uh, that have joined us today as well. It would be really good to see your crosses, to see what you've made. So do uh, have a look on our Facebook page on the Parish of Knights Enham and do add in your pictures there and maybe you want to put a description on there as well as to what you've made and why. Now, you don't have to, not compulsory, but it would be lovely uh, to see what you've done. Uh, see you again uh, next week. May God bless you uh, and stay safe. Look after yourselves. Bye for now. <laughs>